Hey, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. I got no good reason for not making videos. I was just busy with work, but the big news for this video, other than the project we're gonna get to here in a moment, is this past end of October, I left my job as a government contractor. So retired Navy, yeah, I got that going for me. Uh, but now I do woodworking for a living and hopefully do some more YouTube stuff and actually be able to put videos out on the regular. I'm gonna try to do one every week for the time being, see if I can maybe throw another small one in there, but we'll, we'll see how it goes and what projects I can come up with with some, uh, some help from some friends and whatnot. But in today's video, without uh, uh, belaboring the point, is we're gonna be making these on the laser, these crosses. I've got five different designs here that are finished up and you can kind of see here is this one is, I think it's seven layers. Some of them are eight and they're just layered designs. And actually these files weren't files of my own. I actually purchased the design from, um, uh, what was it? Uh, Ma Wood Shop on Etsy. Look them up. They've got a lot of cool um, mandala designs, layered art, whatnot. But you can see some of them here. Chose some different colors for different ones, stains. I'll get into that later in the video, but you can see some of them turned out really cool as far as the uh, layered effects go. And let's see, here's these two as well. So without further ado, let's get into the video, see how these are cut on the layer and what the real pain was in finishing these. So what I'm doing in Lightburn here, this red line is the actual piece of wood. Uh, that I have on my laser right now. I haven't fired up the laser because I want it kind of quiet so I can talk real quick. Um, but I've got it mapped out on here so I know what size it is. So I need to resize this. You know, I want to make it about the size of um, as big as I can on that one piece um, for this test. So I'm going to resize it. The important thing when doing these layered designs of anything is make sure you resize everything together. I've already grouped all, you see here, um, all of these together because they were individual uh, shape files. So make sure you reset, anytime you resize anything, you do it all at the same time, because otherwise uh, it's gonna throw everything off. So what I'm actually, I think I'm gonna do here is I think those four at the top, I'm gonna resize them to about the size of the piece of material. And what I'm gonna do is these bottom three, I'm just gonna flip them. Um, I'm gonna select all these and then I'm just going to, I don't actually, want to mirror them, I want to rotate them. So I'm actually gonna uh, rotate them 180. If I mirrored them, then it could potentially, if there's any differences on uh, top, bottom, left, right, it can start to mess with that. So actually, you know, if I, I wish Lightburn had a nesting feature, I hear they're working on it and I'll be super happy once they actually have that functionality. Um, because otherwise you have to do this pretty much yourself. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna scoot these closer together. Right, so now we get to see what we're working with here, uh, how well everything cut out. Pop these off real quick. This is kind of the satisfying part sometimes when everything cuts it clean. Get that out of the way. Let's see what our pieces look like. So yeah, it looks like everything cut pretty cleanly. I'll have to probably poke out a couple little pieces that are stuck. So let's see here. So you can kind of see one of the pieces here. 
So I'm gonna get the rest of these popped out of here and then we're gonna get to staining a bunch of different like kind of blue tones for some of these and I'm gonna do a couple more uh, sets cut out of a different design and we'll see kind of what colors work and how they turn out. Uh, five different designs laid out here and actually it's the next day because you can see all those cans in front of me there had uh, picked up a bunch of tinted stains, mostly blues, a few little red tones in there also. And what I'm gonna do for each one, because it looks like anybody who's done these in the past for the, these specific designs, kinda looks better if they pick two colors that aren't drastically different, but there's enough difference between them or they're complementary, and they alternate them on the stack. So each one of them, I'm gonna do a different one. So it looks like I'm gonna have a, a light blue with a white and then maybe you know, a darker blue with a lighter blue and then maybe pick some other ones. But I'm gonna get gloves on and we're gonna start doing this. I got coffee, I've got all my supplies. Let's start doing this. Right, when uh, when staining or painting these, this is a, this type of stain is more like a paint than it is a stain, uh, meaning that you have to get a bit of it on there. It's not super runny. If it was regular stain, it's super easy. If it's regular stain, you just get your foam brushes, stain on there, and dab off most of it, right? And then you just slightly brush on there, and it's going to coat the surface. It's it's going to wick. It's going to do all that stuff. You don't have to worry about big globs getting in between little pieces, like you you see on here. Now, one of the things with this type of stuff, you can kind of see it here like you dip some in there, it's gonna do like a paint and it's gonna get on your brush like that. What is it? If you have a loaded up brush like that, the problem is when you brush this stuff, you're gonna get all kinds of big globs of it in all the little nooks and crannies of this stuff. So what I recommend doing like on craft paper here is I, I'll dab it off, all the excess off there, work it into the brush and then wipe off the excess. And then what you're gonna do is with light pressure, just rapidly brush across the surface until you get the color on there and you know, no dry spots. You don't wanna press down because you're not trying to squeeze it out of the brush onto the surface. If you do that, then it's gonna load up in those, those surfaces there. So if you do light strokes like that, switch it, kinda angle your brush like you're dragging, just like you're slowly smoothing it over. So what you'll end up with is like yay. So you can kinda see on this piece right here, I've been coloring that. Let's see if it'll focus, um, come on, focus. See, I like having the unpainted inside because that dark, the burned areas, once it's sprayed with lacquer and it turns dark, creates a bit of contrast. But if you get a bunch of big globs of stain or paint in there, then it's gonna look unprofessional. It's gonna detract from the kind of effect. So just FYI, so I'm gonna get this one finished. We'll put it together and we'll see how it uh, looks out and move on to the rest of them. All right, so this one I just uh, I just stacked everything up. It's not glued together yet. I just want to see what the colors look like. But you can kind of see with alternating colors, it's actually pretty cool how the colors kind of you know they're a little bit different the blue and then the, the semi-transparent white. But uh, it looks I think pretty cool in certain types of light. It's gonna look pretty awesome. So I'm gonna get to work, uh, do some time lapse of staining slash painting the other ones. And then later today, once they're fully cured, we'll, uh, we'll get them glued up and see what we end up with. and we're back so uh unfortunately it is the next morning again i kind of got wrapped up doing some stuff last night um so everything's definitely dry by now so uh definitely some colors i like some colors i don't like but we're still going to put them together finish them and see how they actually turn out in the end so i've got my stacks here do one at a time i'm gonna start gluing them together and for these since they're so small and i don't have a lot of room to play with on here for glue 
Um, if they were really big, I'd probably just use regular wood glue. Um, but I'm actually going to use this uh, form. It's a DAP Rapid Fuse. It's a type of CA glue, um, super glue. Uh, but I like it better. Um, I don't. I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit more durable to me because super glue when it dries is very brittle and sometimes with wood, you know, a little bit of flexing and stuff, it can pop loose. But this stuff seems to do me good for this. So we're gonna get these glued up. And also I like this too, because if there's any squeeze out on the seams, once I clamp them together, um, it's it's clear because I'm gonna spray these with some, um, I haven't decided, I decided either matte or flat uh, semi-gloss um, lacquer afterwards. So anything clear will hide once it's the finish is sprayed. So that's a win there. So I'm gonna get these glued up, clamped up, and we'll go from there. So now you kind of get the idea. So for the glue ups, just step by step, each one I do when I clamp them up, usually by the time I get uh, enough glue on the next one to clamp it up, it's ready to come out of the clamps from the previous one. So usually more than a minute or two. Um, and so far these two are all glued up and they're just waiting. I'll get the other three done and uh, then we'll get them sprayed with some lacquer and we'll see just how good they turn out. All right, I just got back from a meeting with a CPA a little bit ago. It's actually weird having to do that stuff now Now that I'm actually uh, going into business and not just doing it as a hobby. Uh, but I got back uh, before I left earlier, after these were all glued up, uh, sprayed a coal, uh, coat of, um, oh geez, what was it? Of I like using the, actually this stuff, the uh, Minwax Clear Aerosol Lacquer. Um, but this one was the uh, satin finish. So. These actually turned out way better than I thought they would. So you can see some of these, how they kind of turned out. Um, and actually I'll bring them, I'll do some close-ups of everything after this, but you can kind of see here, uh, they look really cool. A um, couple of the patterns, I really like these two uh, and the color variations on this. This one's actually already sold already. It's funny, these started selling before I even got, got them finished. Um, this one, I, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. The color uh, combination was a little too close together, but it still looks all right. It, lessons learned for, for the size, what it is. Um, definitely like this one here, these colors. I think uh, this, this color is what, for the Minwaxies wood stains is called Sangria, which makes me want a picture of that right now, but uh, that one turned out pretty cool. And this one too, but this one with the white, actually kind of uh, white and the light blue. It looks all right. Um, it, they're a little close together, so in certain lights, you can't really make out a lot of the detail, but in certain other lights with shading and stuff, it looks really cool. So um, I'll do some more uh, in better light here after this, so you can see some close-ups of everything, kind of how they turned out and the colors. This one in sunlight re looks really nice. And then this one, this is definitely one of my favorites so far. So um, I'll actually link in the description um, the Etsy page where I got the files for doing these cuts. Um, I think it's my wood shop, um, but I'll, I'll actually link it in here. I'll put it somewhere up here in the corner, uh, the name of the shop and down in the description. But once again, um, I hope you enjoyed watching this project and I'm gonna be making some bigger one of these here in the future. And uh, now that I'm actually doing this as a business, and self-employed. I'm actually going to start making more videos. I know I kind of fell off for a while there, but uh, I'm in business now, so I got to I gotta do this stuff. I got to make videos and make more uh, projects happen. So I'll see you next time.